created to entertain, educate, and evolve the modern day deer hunter. What do you have to do when you edit the video? You gotta pull that mic way up. There you go. A lot better. That's much better. Just, like, I have to wait till he gives me the actual podcast audio, Uh and I lay that out, and then I have to sync the (coughs) video, and the GoPro stores the files. Like, it's only in 17-minute sections, so you got to cut all those together, and then you got to make sure, like, the lips all line up with the audio. Yeah. Because the audio on that thing's garbage. Yeah, the, you get that, like, I'll get, like, if, like, I watch YouTube through Bluetooth or something. Like, there's a huge lag in it. Yeah. God, I wish I knew more about this stuff to take on a chunk or help you take some of the weight off you with that. You don't have to worry about that. I mean, we, we got pretty, pretty much got it. Figured out. Pretty, <coughs> pretty. Our biggest problem is just making... Because he edits the night before he releases, and by the time I actually get the file, it's like, oh. Uh, and then have time to actually put it together. We're like a week behind. Right. So we just need to get a better system in that regard. Well, I don't know how we're going to. Right. This is what it is right now. Right. You know, And it's not that big of a deal. No, it's not. And it's not like it's super time-sensitive stuff. I mean, in season it's a little different. but Yeah. Well, it is definitely nice to catch the traffic when it comes. Right. You know, like the Dan Infault thing, have all that. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Uh, I couldn't shut that one off as far as like for like phone interviews or whatever. That was that was a good one. Dude, that guy cracks me up. I love Dan and <laughs> Paul. I tell you what, he's one of my favorite deer hunters ever, historically. I still I haven't seen him on video yet. I only heard you know listen to. Dude, you gotta go. You gotta go to YouTube and subscribe. Oh yeah, I, I did subscribe to there, and I just seen a couple like. Couple Dude, you gotta ones. watch Imaginary Scent Control. <laughs> Because you've been asking me a lot of scent control questions. Yeah, I want to watch that. It's uh, perfect. It's awesome. He's up in his tree stand, and he's got his camera set up, and you just see these plumes of uh, milkweed just shooting out of the tree stand because he's just throwing handfuls <laughs> of it. Yeah, and it's all, there's a deer right downwind of him, and it's all hitting the deer. You know, it's a, For you or anybody that uh, is interested, go to, yeah, his hunting beast um, YouTube page it's extreme whitetail tactics yeah and watch that video it's oh man he was, it's funny he had me cracking up when he was saying he was up in the stand and there i think he asked like what'd you do different he's like well i didn't take a shower for like two days and <laughs> yeah, right. sitting up there. right yeah he's a super witty and he's got a great sense of humor yeah which that, is awesome because that god is the deer hunting community lacking humor i know man. oh yeah God, what is up everyone's ass? No idea. It drives me nuts. I don't. I get so frustrated watching a lot of oh, the stuff. Geez. It's like you can't laugh at all. Somebody invited me to a group. Uh, actually, it was Sam from Titanium Archery Products. He he contacted me yesterday and he said, "Hey, you should drop your episodes on uh, it's Bow Hunters of America. Mm-hmm. It's a group on Facebook that has 150,000 people." And he said, "There's a lot of." kind of semi-idiotic rhetoric back and forth on there but you know it was a lot of a lot of traffic or whatever so i i didn't know anything about it i went there found the group and i joined oh god i went on there one week and it's like yeah i'm about done because it's just <laughs> stuff, god people just like a bunch of stuffed shirts no it's it's arguing oh, it's, it's people just ta- talking back and forth and debating things and people post like this stuff these stupid questions you know like what's the best camo pattern and go if i see one more person p- post on facebook and go they're just they're gone and from gone. my is that the new saying yeah now and gone exactly 
perfectly. <laughs> it's like CNN, but in the woods. Like, it's yeah. just annoying. <laughs> I yeah. can't. I it's can't like everyone that. be so interested in this comment that you're all so eager to comment. Hurry, comment. Go. Go. God. Stop. Yeah, I'm just... I know you're done with Facebook, huh? And, and honestly, if it wasn't for this, I, I might be too. Well, I like posting pictures of the, um, my kid and stuff for the family to see oh, and whatnot. But Yeah, it's the only reason why I have my account because I got all my family in Canada. And I just I only go on there if I see something that pops up in my email when I check my email. Pick yeah. your mic up just a little bit more there. Tip it. There you go. There yeah, you. it's just disgusting. Like I'll do one swipe when, when I do go on there and I'm just like, I'm going to. Don't these people have anything better to do with life? No. It's <laughs> No. I'm just, no, I just I like, lack some kind of, like, chromosome. I just don't want to engage in any kind of confrontation yeah, or I arguing. Yeah, I found myself for the first time in a very long time starting to comment on a negative, you know. I was starting to talk some shit <laughs> to a guy because his comment was so rude and just, yeah. it was just like, beat it nerd like right. get lost and i deleted it i'm just thinking nope i'm not even getting pulled into this but it was <laughs> nope. just like it was just Internet that frustrating trolling. yeah yeah <laughs> exactly just be the better man and swipe on yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know that the whole deer hunting community now I, I think it's everybody's trying to combat the whole just fat guys sitting around a fire binge drinking yeah. To the point now where it's gone to the extreme opposite, where everybody's, like, trying to show off how righteous of a hunter they are. It's like, well, let's face it. Yeah, I like to hunt. I love to eat the meat. It's a great part of it. I still like to have fun while I do it. Right. You know, I, I work enough. I don't need to be stressed about every little thing I'm doing out in the woods, too. It's supposed to be an enjoyable activity. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's part of it, and I think a big part of it is the monetization of yeah. everyone's platforms, the people having the ability to make money off of uh, a Facebook page or a YouTube page or whatnot. And so everybody's like scared to that, that corporate, that dark overhead corporate cloud moves yeah. over <coughs> things real quick. And that's where the money comes from. Yeah. And people get fun. so nervous to, uh, you know, get in get you know whatever reprimanded you know everything's fun Everybody, until you add money yeah yeah i feel like it's like they're so quick to do a plug or put this in your face like it's like when you go to AutoZone, you're cashing out mm -hmm. and you know the girl knows you have no inclination to buy it uh, oil change kit for seven ninety nine and a flashlight for three ninety nine. No, that's a big part of it. But she has to ask that because her boss is hiding between the spark right. plug boxes, waiting for her to forget it so she could, yeah, you know, rip them her out. It's this one piece of power he has in his life. Yeah. So. Well, a, a way that all these people or all these people, people in general, these platforms um, get paid is by sponsorships, and those sponsorships come with a detailed thing of what you're mandated to do yeah there's a protocol you like, <laughs> oh, i'm taking a drink <laughs> um do you want me to cut my hands and cough into it yeah a please phone call <laughs> um they are mandated to say and do certain things right and then that company you're representing that company so if you were to you know say anything that they deemed inappropriate they essentially own your you know a, a lot of i was just talking with a fellow podcaster a couple of days ago and he's he had a, like a real lucrative offer to uh get sponsorship like good money and uh he said no because they wanted to be able to listen to the episodes before he published them and mm -hmm. uh have the final say on editing oh yes. yeah i forget that like deal with the devil yeah and he it's said like, no way signing a record contract in nashville or something at that point right oh, yeah it's you lose horrible. all your freedom but right yeah that shit's just getting me bent out of shit been getting me a little bit bent out of shape is like it's so serious yeah like <clears throat> one of the problems is obviously I spend a lot of time around it now you know mm -hmm. well and uh, to a point you know it has to be somewhat serious because there's a lot of money in it 
like companies oh yeah have like a company like matthews has millions of dollars in the marketing and they can't just nonchalantly throw that stuff out there you know they have to be like tact tactfully present it Mm -hmm. and that's why people like the juries and stuff because they're just they're like robotic when it comes to it man yeah it's whoever their clothing company is that time or their knives you know you can't listen to one of the juries talk for more than five minutes without them dropping like two sponsors like 30 seconds but they're the most successful guys when it comes to it right so yeah matthews is a great example i probably shouldn't even talk about it but to use them as an example about the corporate, like, dark cloud. Oh, yeah. They that, they literally stop bow shops from selling other bows in their shop. Like, they do. They they will tell the bow companies that if they sell these other bows, that they will pull all their stock right. and not give them the ability to make money off Matthew's bows. They literally take their toys and go home. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It is ridiculous. Like they're not making enough. Right. Exactly. Right. By just letting guys try to make a good, you know, make a good well, dollar running yeah. a fair business. It's just a, sh- it's just a bullshit way they're trying to control the market space. How about make a better product, shithead? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? The solo cam's the newest, greatest thing. Hey, seventeen saw, years ago. Who who had a split lid? Oh. I don't, and I don't. I'm not bad mouthing anybody that shoots Matthews. I'm sure they make awesome bows. I mean, right. they didn't get yeah. where they are by not making good product. But at this point, you know, other there's small companies, and that's how I found out about this. Is a guy, a small company that makes bows, and was selling them at a shop, and that shop contacted him and said, "Hey, sorry, we can't sell your bow. We got in trouble, essentially." Right. And it's like. You gotta be kidding me! That stuff goes on, like. Oh yeah. Well, that's I mean, just it's disgusting. the same thing with yeah. uh, like beer companies. Right. Bell's, I mean, Bell's is a great company. They donate a lot of money. They make a lot of great beer, but they squash every little brewery that's trying to start up in any kind of even mention of a name or something. They just copyright lawyers everything. It's just. Oh yeah. You know. I, I forget the exact story. There was something happening a couple of years something ago. About their logo or something? Or, or <clears throat> yeah. The name? Yeah, I can't. I'll have to look up the details. If I can find the link to the story, I'll post it on the uh, Deer Hunter Facebook page. But I remember that. It was like, ah, I was pulling for you guys until now you're starting to <laughs> act like the big guys. You yeah. Know? They, they, they uh, from what Drew Youngdike explained to me, they donate a lot of money to uh, conservation efforts around right. the Great Lakes and stuff, which really makes me like them. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, just... It was a very anheuser Bush move that they did. I remember hearing something similar. It was some little startup brewery, and they, like, basically threw every lawyer they could at them. Yeah. But, I mean, Bells is still... Like you said, they donate a ton of money, and they make really good beer. And they're... <clears throat> it's hard to argue with that, but at the same time, I was angry at them for a little while, and then I... Remembered how good Two Hearted Ale was, so yeah, I didn't have the choice. They pulled something very un-Michigan. <laughs> right. You know, while we're talking shit about everybody, <laughs> <laughs> I had a thing right here in front of me. I have the uh, uh, BHA Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, Anglers Journal. It's the uh, quarterly magazine that you get when you sign up to be a Backcountry Hunters and Anglers member. You feel pretty confident and comfortable about maybe making mention of what... Uh, that rumor or is it like a confirmed thing that was about kuyu oh, oh. <clears throat> it was uh mikoff would be the guy to really talk to because at at the point of the night when we were talking about it it was a little uh intoxicated but <laughs> but you feel like the premise of the it premise is... of it was is that kuyu didn't want to work with bha and they worked that. with uh i heard a specific comment S- that aggravated me on uh, what one? That uh, that Kuyu only works with groups that make an impact. Yeah, groups that move the needle. That's how exactly it, oh, what. How it was. Safari worried. Club. Yeah, it was SCI. So, not my favorite organization, but. <clears throat> well, yeah. how do you not support BHA? I don't know. They're a great group of guys, man. I think you just have to have a heart on. Yeah. about something <laughs> about well, it's so- people you're rubbing shoulders with you know but you, how you're all working in the outdoor industry that guy hunts on public land i'm sure right right yeah but he's also mostly in uh 
shoulder to shoulder with sheep hunters, which isn't exactly an affordable tag for most people. Yeah. You know, a sheep hunt's a rather expensive tag and then Very. that usually I don't know. I, if that statement's true and you have the audacity to say that BHA doesn't move the needle when they are literally sh- c- causing politicians to leave their jobs. Right. You are I don't I don't know how you get away with saying that. Right. Or how you feel comfortable saying that. Yeah. Well, and if that is true, I mean, I'm just I'm done buying Kuyu stuff. Yeah, I know it sucks too. I like their stuff. I like their stuff too a lot. But that's why there's other companies out there, man. You know your dollar drives it. So I know it's kind of, I mean, I don't know. I guess I have like a, uh, I really like BHA. Like everything about it. Yeah. I feel like they their mission sits above and beyond a lot of the bullshit and rhetoric that we're talking about, that we started talking about yeah. with this the little piddly stuff and whatnot. That seems to be a group of guys that have a bigger mission. Mm-hmm. And managed to have a sense of humor about the entire thing but when it's time to go to work it gets done it gets done yeah no bha is a great organization and it's such i mean it's such a good cause because it's not yeah it's called backcountry hunters and anglers but they're literally protecting the rights of anybody that wants to use public land it all boils down to public land and keeping it public and making sure public access is always a thing because it is unique only to our country. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it, <laughs> I mean, if you have any concerns, which I guess it gets deemed a lefty issue about clean air and clean water, right. uh, you know, keeping these places, keeping these places f- free of uh, any kind of, what, construction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah, it? I was just reading an article the other day. It was uh, talking about how these guys are buying up. They're literally buying up tracts of land. Can you hand me a bottle opener over there, buddy? Yeah. To encase public land. So they'll privatize every access point to the public land. I've heard that as and well. And then, so, yeah, it's still public. You're not losing it. You just don't have access to it. Yeah. it's like so. And then they just make thousands, you know, selling access to the land. Which is bullshit. That's just crazy if you read about any other country, like England and all that, as far as hunting goes, right. and how the landowner owns the animals on it. Well, geez, on Rogan today, you had Adam Greentree on, uh-huh. and he's talking about you know Australia yeah. and how, how how their whole system works, and it's just like, God, you think that there's any ever any problems with ours, or ours doesn't work efficiently. Yeah, go there. Look at the way other countries are. I mean, we do it, and he says it, your your system here is just far, far, far superior. Yeah, we have a beautiful system, and somebody was smart enough to see what we had, you know, 100 years ago and, you know, and just start creating all these national parks and setting this aside and that aside before it was all gone because once it's gone, it's not coming back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have many magazines that come to my house anymore for obvious reasons. Yeah. Did you notice that this one's, uh, I think it's printed on a little stockier paper. It feels gonna say, much more. I was going to say, I noticed particularly that this issue. A um, little fancier. It is, man. <laughs> this is, this is. Oh, that's what I was going to say. This is the nicest magazine that I've had in my hands in a really long time. And this magazine, the BHA Quarterly Magazine, like you see deer and deer hunting and the, you know, the little yeah. aisles at Cabela's and stuff. That's like reading... Uh, a maxim or a cosmopolitan it's like, like men's health <laughs> yeah yeah the monthly what's the monthly plan you know All right bha the backcountry journal is an actual magazine worth reading there is some good stuff in there these guys spare no expense at putting that thing together yeah they do a nice job i just thought i'd bring that up because i think the whole deal started because what bha maybe had reached out to jason harrison and asked him for uh, right. maybe a little <clears throat> sponsorship stuff or whatever. Yeah. Any, help, you know, like stuff to give away and sweepstakes and stuff like that. But yeah, and he like had an attitude about it. Right. Well, he just said, he, and this is all secondhand yes, after several beverages at Rendezvous. So. Jason Harrison, feel free to contact me yeah, uh, via we'll social media <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that that was what I heard. So. Yeah, from a per, uh, from too. a very reliable. Because I have a Kuyu guide jacket and I love it. It's a great jacket, but yeah, 
I just assume give my money to a company that actually gives back. Yeah. You know? Well, they give a shit about the bigger cause and they give a shit about you essentially. Right. Like BHA is not just looking out for themselves. It's it's a it's a group that's focused on protecting this for everybody and anybody in future generations too. Yep. You know, start thinking about our kids. What kind of shit's going to be coming down the pipeline when oh, we're, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's going to be that different scenario in twenty oh, years. Oh man, people should be paying attention right now. <laughs> I, I just wanted to reach out and anybody that's been following this show, I'd strongly, uh, you know, ask that you sign up. Or at least go to BHA's website and read up on the mission. Yeah, just follow. If you're not even going to give them money, just follow them on, you know, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Yeah. And just every once in a while look to see what's going on. And I guarantee you're going to see something in the first couple of weeks where you're going to be like, yeah, I'm signing up for that. Yep. And it's not, it's like, what, 25 or $30? Yeah, I think 20, it's 25 or 35 25 for 25 eight? for annual membership and it's 35 for family. Mm-hmm. And then, and they, you know, they give you a couple extra gifts for the, you know, with each step up. Yeah, they have some go. good uh, bundles too, as yeah. far as like lifetime memberships. Mm-hmm. You know, if you wanted a lifetime membership, you can get the Kimber rifles. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you're talking a couple thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, but and I know Seek Outside has like what? a hot tent package that they'll do that comes with a lifetime membership and. Yeah, they just sent me a package with all the entry forms and everything for the, I guess, big giant sportsman's 100, 100 yeah. gear yeah. giveaway. Yeah, they yeah. have access to so much stuff because so many companies strongly believe in their mission. Right. That's why I was so shocked that somebody, you know, that was in the hunting industry would be like, no, I don't really think you guys are doing a great job or anything. Right. It's like, what? What are you talking about? But yeah, they're, they're, you have access to... And they're doing like some big giveaways right now that are just outrage. I mean, they're tens of thousands of dollars worth of gear given away. Yeah, it wants to work with uh, things that are moving the needle. It's the fastest growing conservation oh, yeah. organization and the youngest right conservation group in the states. So probably in the world, I would assume, right? Yeah, I, yeah, well, I would think so. The demographic of that. National Wildlife Federation is probably a pretty big one, but right. I think Michigan chapter of BHA alone over the last year grew like 600% or something. Hopefully yeah, that's what Jason was when we are uh, when we go deer hunting here in a couple of weeks, we can hook up with Drew Youngdike and get a podcast in. Yeah. That would be fun. And try to do that from an outfitting tent up at deer camp. Yeah. So I stumbled across some very good batteries for power in the <laughs> podcast station <laughs> mobile. So. Stumbled across, didn't yeah. it? I built some shelves to put up a <laughs> car battery on the tree. No, man. They're going to be a bitch to carry, but. <laughs> <laughs> Get them air dropped. <laughs> you hand me a pen so I can start checking off my list as we go down it here? Let's talk about deer camp. Let's. Tell him. What's that? Tell him what you told me. Oh yeah. I well, think. let's 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 uh, let's premise it with our conversation earlier in the week, which was like a little bit saddening mm-hmm. that our camp seemed to be dwindling in numbers like dramatically this year. Which it's a midweek rifle opener, right? Which limits people, and some of our guys want to go down to Ohio, which I get. They got time invested, and they feel like that's where their best opportunity lies, and then. And, uh, <clears throat> and a lot of money in the tag. That's kind of <laughs> yeah. eating at my soul a little bit. You know, Mich- yeah, the Michigan uh, Department of Natural Resources got a heavy donation from me so far this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just kind of a bummer when we were talking because you were talking at first. You were saying, well, I think I'm going to go to Ohio, and I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to deer camp by myself. But well, I'm I gonna was, be, oh, well, I don't want to. You were going to go for a couple. Get the facts out there. I was going to go for <laughs> two days. I was going to drive down to Ohio before hunt a day and a half, and then drive up and hunt two days of bow season, and then hunt two days of rifle season. So I wasn't just negating Michigan as an option. <laughs> it's true. But I do have a hundred and fifty dollar Ohio deer tag in my pocket. Right. That I don't know when yeah. I'm going to get to use again, and I have a week off. But for can you go back down in December? I can, yeah. But obviously, you know, the f- second week in November is pretty glorious. Time when is their gun? It is the first Monday after Thanksgiving. 
for a week. Could you go down for gun? I Dude, could, but I would, man. Make that tag worth your while. Yeah, I just like bow hunting so much, though. God, I love gun hunting. Take the muzzle loader. I love bow hunting too, but and I saw a huge deer while I was down there this this last weekend. So yeah, that always reach out you. and touch him with the smoke pole. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, so okay, yeah, so you were gonna be gone for a couple of days, but then you were gonna come up there, but that was it. Yeah. Other than that, like none of our entire crew was gonna come up. Which I mean, we've had camps where we've had 20 guys right? oh, yeah. up there i mean in our younger you know there was less deer hunting and more drinking and partying and whatnot i mean we always deer hunted pretty seriously but yeah. a lot of guys came up just to socialize and drink and whatnot i, I will say i missed a morning hunt there and there or here and there over yeah, this time but yeah, it's cool property up there catch the morning hunt but so i started talking to nick yesterday and just told him kind of what our plans were and i said hey start thinking about you know what you might want to do and what did you tell me today oh yeah uh, i just transferred a different job day i was just talking to foreman and it's funny like right off the bat when i was just backed into the parking spot and one of the first things he said was uh you hunter you go out deer hunting so we ended up getting on a topic of that and just chatting about that throughout the day about hunting and and then he asked today uh it's like so what's, what's your plans for uh for deer season it's coming up soon just want to kind of feel it out and and I was, I didn't really have a plan, you know, I was kind of up in the air what what I was going to do. And, and he's like, you work? He's like, but I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be gone Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But uh, if you want it now, just let me know. And I was like, well, sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. So yeah. you got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off. Huh? Yeah. Badass. So that, and I'm really excited about that. And then, uh, yeah, he. He's like, yeah, I'll be here, but I'm not going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So that's what I pretty much tell my work every year, too. It's like, I'm going to take these days off. I'm like, well, what if we need you? It's like, well, then you're going to need me. I'm not going to be there. <laughs> it's like there's other jobs out there. Oh, man, you so deserve that for our time you put in each year. Yeah, but. Man. It's just that it's one of those things that's cut. It's just clear cut. It's like, ah, I'll find a new job. I don't care. I deal with a lot of shit, but yeah. I'll find a new job. If this one week is too much to ask for. Right. And I'm always hesitant about asking. I don't really take too much time off, and I've been missing a lot of deer. I don't think I've been up to Buckhorn for an opener for, cripes, probably pushing 10 years. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, but you're probably right. Yeah. I think probably 06 or 07 were my last two. So I started thinking about that. I'm like, you know, this is uh it's a perfect opportunity for the Outfitters tent and wood stove. So I think I'm going to crack her out. You don't think you want to just shack up with us in the teepee? Oh, you're going to have the teepee going? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were, uh, were doing it that week weekend before and then breaking oh, it down. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're saying you're going to bring, yeah. For uh, There will be plenty of free bunks in the Airstream. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You don't need to go through all that effort. Yeah. I mean, you can if you want to. It is a lot of effort. Yeah. But it's definitely not necessary. So here's the plan. Uh, I'm leaving early Saturday morning. He's leaving Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. We're going to go find a spot to camp in the Pigeon, set the TP up, and we're going to bow hunt out of the TP for Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then we'll probably get up Tuesday morning, hunt, come down, come in, break mm-hmm. break camp down. And then, uh, what's wrong? I forgot to hit record again. God damn it. <laughs> Jesus. I got it now. Perfect. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, like I said, I worked 36 hours in the last two days. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm I'm very proud of you, though. Could you imagine if I was like, oh, I forgot to hit record. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you're the host. But that happened now. to me once. Oh, man. Um, but so Tuesday we'll come in from hunting in the morning and we'll break camp down and then we're going to drive to Buckhorn. And, uh, when I go up Saturday, I'm going to open the camper up Mm -hmm. and turn the heat on so that Tuesday afternoon. Mice will be all warm and toasty. Mice will all be nice and cozy. They'll all be kicked back and relaxing, waiting for us. They'll have our racks turned down, mints on the pillow. The mice, (laughs) I I loaded it up with decon pretty good. We shouldn't have a mouse issue. Those mice are pervious to decon. It doesn't even phase them. Uh, It phases them. 
They literally eat it and then go shit in our coffee maker. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so then, yeah, you, there's no reason you have to bring your outfit or tent. I mean, if you want to bring it, you're more than welcome to, but it's going to be us mm-hmm. and potentially Jason Meekoff. That'd be awesome. Yeah, because most times I usually just sleep in the shed by the wood stove. And yeah, that's not going to be necessary this year. Because Jason's not going. Nick's not going. Yeah. Hal's not going. Tommy's, Tommy's not, not going. going. Man. Right. I don't know about Vade, and I doubt he'll go. Any Neva dolls? No. Nope. I don't going think so. Can't Jason, lose. Nick, and Ryan are all going back down to Ohio. Oh, geez. So. Yeah. I just can't. It, can't it, let go of that day up in Mich- northern yeah. Michigan. They become size queens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> They're chasing it, that's for sure. It's just too fun up there. It's yeah, too it, nice. It just how is it in Ohio getting away? From, like, where the places that you went were, were they pretty? Like, uh, were you away from road noise and all that stuff? Uh, the places we were hunting, we weren't, but we were trying to find like smaller chunks that might be lesser known. Uh huh. But there was some big chunks where you could. Okay. You could definitely get away from road noise. Yeah. But uh it's it's hard hunting down there, man. It was Was it the totally brush or different. The, the elevation changes? Both. Yeah. You're literally climbing up, you know, forty five degree angles with briars just ripping at everything. <sighs> like when I got done hunting down there after the four days, like my thighs you know, and you drop your pants. It looked like somebody just took a wire brush and just smacked my oh. thighs with it. There's just <laughs> these little red dots all over. So, I'm. It was different. That you know, sucks. it was. I, it was fun though. It was a, a cool experience. Yeah, it sounded awesome. I was talking to Ryan a little bit about, it and it sounded like it was just a blast. Yeah. Yeah, because I had never been down there. So the first morning, throwing the lone wolf on my back, everything, getting ready to head up the to go hunt and jason's like all right follow me I'm like all right and then it was just uphill for 45 minutes Cribes. you know sometimes you're grabbing saplings and literally just p- climbing basically <laughs> oh little roots they got it <laughs> stay strong <laughs> little roots <laughs> it was it was cool though i mean i that was the first time i'd ever hunted in hill country yeah it's and but you know I, we saw a couple of really nice deer none of us were able to close the distance we did get uh pretty shitty weather while we were down there it It was touching 80 the four days we were down there every day it was just sunny 80 no wind that's Uh, rough so that's like a totally unappealing thing about me heading south to go deer hunting that's what i kept saying i was like man it's beautiful up north right now yeah but so I get three, it. 130 well, that's part deer. of the reason why you do see big deer is because they don't have those harsh brutal, winters. harsh winters, yeah. right? I mean, that's all part of the the big big factor in it. Mm-hmm. But there's not – I so look forward to driving up north and watching the temperature go down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like such a like, breath of fresh air. Dude, there's been times we've been driving up, and when they start putting the digital readout – thermometers in our truck cabs or whoever had a truck that high tech like getting excited you know going through like the west branch area and that's like the cutoff zone right it'll drop 20 degrees you know in 10 miles yeah getting all excited when it drops below zero and watching those negative numbers kick in. i know it is it's just yeah for me to be driving south and watching the temperature thing go up would just be like no i'm getting sad it was uh (laughs) it was the weather we were getting really because it was clear no wind or anything no clouds so at night it'd get super cold not super cold but it would be like 30s you know it was 36 three of the four mornings when we woke up and when you're sleeping in a teepee that's a little chilly you yeah. know we didn't have a we did have a space heater going in we were glamping for the most part I oh, you had wi-fi we, we did said. we had wi-fi Dude, at KOAs our are. it was ridiculous yeah and it, it was funny too because 
we we made these reservations <laughs> like six months in advance, not even thinking about it. Well, it ended up being like their trick or treat weekend. Oh, oh no way! Yeah, so there's all these RVs around us with oh. all these like gravestones and like all these big Halloween decorations. And Bunch shit. of kids all running yeah, around, and then trick there's or four assholes sleeping in a teepee, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right in the middle of it all. Oh, but, that's awesome. <laughs> But the whole reason why we picked that campground is because they had the deer processing That's station. Badass. For it was ten bucks for the first night and five bucks every night after that. If you had a deer, you could put it in a walk-in cooler. They had stainless steel tables. You know, we were hoping that we would shoot some deer while we were down there. Yeah. To the point where we even took a turkey fryer and a pot to do our European mounts while we were down. We were down there. Down there. Down there. If if we got something. You can keep going. But uh <laughs> I'll fix that in post. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no. Wrong. It'll line up perfect with the YouTube video recording. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but it was it, Yeah, we had power drop and we had water to our camp cuz it was we were basically in the RV site. Oh yeah. But then we just had the TP set up there. <laughs> So it was really funny at night because I took a like a treble light and hung it off the center pole of the teepee. Uh huh. And uh, so when you turn that treble light on, the teepee just looked like this big green rocket ship. <laughs> and then there's all these RVs around it, like you know, thousand, hundred thousand dollar RV or whatever. Yeah. Man and, rocket. Right. And then there's just a rocket full of Ford just. <laughs> I, Grizzled it, deer hunter. <laughs> Grizzled deer. Yeah, that's the nice way to put it. Oh. To the point where I almost felt bad for people around us. Because you get, when you got in the teepee and you close the door, you know, it was like deer camp talk in there. Oh, yeah. And then there's kids trick-or-treating <laughs> outside. So it's just, it was a bad deal in that regard. But Ryan giggling away. The campground seemed entertained by our presence. We weren't overly offensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, many, I wouldn't think so. You're a good enough group of guys. Right. Many campgrounds been blessed with our clan. <laughs> It was a good trip, though. I, I want to go back down there. I just don't know when I'm going to find time to. Would you ever do, a, like, a state forest or national forest campground, get more off off the path? Yeah, if we had uh, the ability to. Mm-hmm. Like, with when Kevin and I go stay out in the teepee, we're going to convert that into a hot tent. You know, I don't – I mean, I, I don't mind being miserable, but that KOA was 10 minutes from where we were hunting – and it wasn't when you got four guys paying for it. It was like thirty-eight bucks a piece to oh, camp yeah. for the four days. To have a heater and a coffee pot going, you know. Yeah, and show- access to showers. Yeah, we had yeah. showers. Poop and w- poop and water. And it was n- Ryan. The one night got super sweaty because it was eighty, <laughs> and he <laughs> and he just perspired right through all his clothes. So he was able to go. You know, he had brought some like sent wash and was able to go wash his clothes so i mean there was benefits to it but uh yeah i mean the backcountry experience would be way more fun but where we were you couldn't really get like that kind of an experience you know that is nice man when we did my dad's elk hunting up in wolverine we lived in that outfitter's tent for eight 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 days Mm mm-hmm and I didn't take a shower for a single one of them. Yeah. And we're out trudging through waist deep snow, just sweating balls. You know, oh, like yeah. Pre merino days. Just you know, no no concept of the layering system back then. We'd be drenched. And no running water, no power, nothing. We just had the wood stove in there. And I remember going to the gas station to get a coffee, you know, ten miles outside of the town and using the bathroom and just feeling the hot, warm yeah, running water hands. on my hands. Yeah. Wash my face. Those field wipes you can get now are a game changer. Yeah. They're nice. And the fact that you can, you know, it's basically like a baby wipe, but it's scent free and you can wipe down with that and, you know, hit the the key areas, knock some cheese off. Oh and God. <laughs> cheese. <laughs> Makes it a lot more uh, enjoyable anyways. Just bring some seven dust and d- give myself a nightly delousing. <laughs> yeah, or do the... Uh, arabian shower up at uh <laughs> buckhorn where it's just the uh field field wipes spritzer of spray oh. yeah. baby powder whatever you can get your hands on <laughs> to cleanse yourself bring a bottle of old spice 
AKA what grandpa calls a shower. <laughs> well, we're luck. We got a well now. Yeah. Oh my God. That's water. You so haven't been nice. up there since then, huh? Dude, it's beautiful. Yeah. I haven't been up there since May. That well's a game changer, man. Yeah, camp's looking good. Nice. Real good. So, yeah, I'm excited to get up there. Like I said, I hope that we can hook up with uh, Drew when we're up there and get a podcast in and go see his camp. I talked to uh, Scotty today. I Ice. think I told you, you know, he was he's getting into Edison. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so he thought he might be starting the middle of October and he'd have a mandatory, like, one-month thing where he couldn't miss any time. He was going to miss camp. Right. Um, well, he's not starting now until the middle of December. That is awesome. So he knows he's leaving his current job. Ooh. So I called him today, and I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, drinking coffee by the wood stove up north. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'll be doing that for, like, the next four days. I'm like, that, you're not working? He's like, nope. Dude, that is so awesome. He's like, and I'll be up here for 10. I think he said he's going for like 10 days when uh, we go up to gun hunt. For gun? Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so. You going to get uh, those guys coming over to camp? I'm sure we'll hook up with them. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. That'd be good. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe get Scotty on a podcast there in Airstream or something. Nice. <laughs> Do a little conversation <laughs> i'm gonna try to record as much as we can when yeah. we're up there about sharing hunting stories and what's going on and whatnot and then you know i may run to town once or twice to try to upload an episode because yeah. we're gonna be gone for a better part of i'm gonna be gone for a week right and there's no i uh, you know i can barely get a text or a phone call out there's no sending any kind of yeah data or anything like that no, from there i would have bad. to drive to gaylord to do that and so, you say it's bad. I mean, I don't know. I kind of. I used to be able. Enjoyable. Oh yeah, yeah, it is very enjoyable. I do. Unless like you that. get in a situation where yeah, you need to communicate with somebody on something. But uh, yeah, it, it, otherwise, when we get back, you know, I'll just I'll I'll publish everything in a timely fashion. I knew so. I said I was going to record some stuff when we were down in Ohio, but you're just. It's rough. Dog too. pissed tired every night. Yeah. The first night we got down there, it was one thirty in the morning. Then we got up at 4 to go hunting. It's hard walking that fine line be- between documenting your good times to reflect on later right. and just and enjoying, enjoying the moment. I know. It's a struggle. Yeah. I right? tend to go with the latter and not really document anything and just kind of take it all in while I'm there. Yeah. But Which is nice about this, though, because... I can talk about it a week later and not really miss that many details, but. Right. Yeah. Well, it's nice too with this, like when we come in from hunting at night and uh, we can sit down and talk for 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort once this stuff is set up. Well, once that time change hits too, you got a lot more time. Right. right. God, I'm not looking forward to that. No. I was just thinking about that today, how much I hate that. We were basically leaving camp at. We were getting up at 4, leaving camp between 4.35, and we were not getting back until 8, 8.30 at night. That's So, I mean, we were just hunting yeah. the whole time. Were you hunting all midday and stuff? We would come in for like an hour to eat lunch and look at because we were hunting. We were never sat the same spot twice mm-hmm. the whole time. So we would come in up to the trucks or whatever. We would shoot to the campground for literally 45 minutes just to change because you had to – because in the mornings it was 36, so you had, like, your merino base layer on and stuff. So right. So you get to camp, you would shed that, take a shower if you needed to, eat a quick lunch, and then we were heading right back out. So if we got to camp at noon, you'd be out of there at 1.30, back up into the tree, you know. Yeah, that's a, that's a long day. Yeah, but it was sweet because we had Wi-Fi at camp. So And I had brought a little tablet with Onyx on it so we could look oh. at all our maps. And we were we just shared one Onyx account while we were down there, so you could drop a pin whereabout you were gonna sit. You so everybody kind of maybe not say that. Well, I don't know. <laughs> they're not giving me any. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Uh, I don't know. Onyx stocks plummets. <laughs> <laughs> well, they should do a better job of some. securing it. Yeah, I mean, it worked out great. Cause yeah, come you, on, Onyx. You'd drop a pin, and it, you'd had it on your account, you know. and Yeah. Right. And no, that makes handing, sense if you're on a group hunting trip. Right. Four guys, and then, like, when you're walking through the woods in pitch black, you can open up that phone and be like, oh, well, he dropped his pin here, and I'm within, like, 
400, 500 yards, I'm going to start going the other way. So that's kind of interesting. So you can see each other's pin drops, but you can't see each other in real time where you are or where you're moving. No. But if somebody gets to their stand, they could drop a pin, and you could instantly see where they're at, huh? Well, we were dropping the – we were looking at the maps before we went out and saying, like, you know, I'm going to hunt this ridge over here, Mm -hmm. not exactly knowing where – what tree you're going to be in, but the general – area you were going to be in mm-hmm. you just knew and then we had no issues with it but i'm saying if you're room. in the tree stand and you're looking at on x and another guy's in the tree stand and he's looking at on x and he drops a pin does it pop up on your thing while you're looking at it we didn't do that i don't know i can't say like real time like i'm gonna drop a pin right now you know because you don't have your phone out the whole time right you know it's in your pocket no i'm just curious if it works like that or if it wouldn't come back into wi-fi if at all like sinks up yeah. it could i don't know i wasn't paying close enough attention in a, that regard to watch it like real time to see if i could see when somebody else was adding their spot to their map but yeah mm-hmm. it makes that year membership a lot better deal <laughs> <laughs> i know i my uh my seven day free trial just expired so i need yeah. to I need yeah to for, step thir- it up. for 30 bucks i mean geez well, for two states now, they don't. You can't just pay another thirty dollars. You have to pay a hundred dollars for the. Oh yeah, that sucks if you're traveling out of state to hunt. Right, huh? and we're hunting Michigan and Ohio, so a hundred dollars. It's it's a lot of money. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> so, what did you guys all do? Split the state. Yeah, we just threw you know, commoned up our money, and one person made the account. So. Yeah, right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Well. You owe us on X if you hear this. And <laughs> no, they don't. We just cost them probably a lot of money. <laughs> no, well, they'll probably, you, you, next time you go on there to do it, it you know, won't work. Yeah, that's true. Because they'll hear that. And yeah, be like, they'll oh, shut sure. it down. Figure some way to Lock your cell phone or, number into the. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they I can't. Have, they have to know. but Right. Yeah, they know. They know there's some shifty. Right. characters out there <laughs> it's not even shifty i mean it's just what do you mean you could go on craigslist and put a thing up there and say you could use my onyx account for five dollars <laughs> i'm sure it's somewhere we violated their terms of service but at mm. the same time uh, i don't know i don't feel bad about it no but i was saying for one state for 30 bucks that's a no for one state it's not bad and you used yeah. to be able to buy Multiple states. Multiple states, but they changed it to some bullshit model now where yeah. it's like you get the one state for 30 or it's $100 and you get five states. It's like, well, who? I know I'm, I'm sure there's people out there that hunt five states, but I don't hunt five states. No, we'd have to drive five states to get to anywhere we'd like to hunt next. Right. You know. James Orr of Trad Quest podcast is calling me james i'll have to call you later buddy <laughs> oh yeah trad quest yeah talk to him this week yeah real 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 nice guy yeah he's got a great podcast too actually he had a great guest the last one he had on there so old timer bow hunter really yeah i just came across him on instagram my trad quest has ceased for a while <laughs> yeah what's up with that <laughs> well no tradin he doesn't have the time, man. It's yeah, a commitment. Can, it takes. I can drop an arrow at sixty yards with my prime and not even have to think twice about it. So you yeah. don't want to even feel the blow of their last breath at fifteen yards with the recurve. I can do that with my compound <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes time and commitment. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's a I, struggle. I was out there with tiki torches and spotlights lighting up my shooting lane to get <laughs> arrows in every day. Just to get the practice and to get up to snuff again with that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I shot yesterday and I shot really well. It was actually funny. I was had to laugh about it because uh, I was shooting like just money, like 20, 25 yards, just touching fletchings. And uh, I was like kind of wrapping up and I was feeling so good. I was like, ah, take one last group, you know? Oh. It's and a big mistake. That's, literally, yep. they could it couldn't have been worse. Like I'm just like, <laughs> well, I shouldn't have done that. Yep. So then I continued to shoot for like 15 more minutes, and I'm just like, man, you got to quit on a high note. Yeah, That's you exactly do. Exactly what I do. Yep, 100. percent It's a confidence thing. Oh man, like I'll sure. go up there to pull those arrows out, and I'll start like 
No, just go back in the house, you asshole. You're done. Finish on a high <laughs> note. <laughs> Ryan's texting me right now. He says, you guys going to wrap it up soon? This first beer. Should I tell him to come over here? Yeah, let's let's wrap this one up. We can yeah, we'll wrap this one up and start a new one when he gets here. Right on. Sounds good. We are waiting for you. In room 207. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that anybody that's been following the show, um, if you want to do a huge favor by supporting the show, go to BHA. If you're not already a member, become one. Yep. Because that doesn't just support this show. It supports all hunting platforms, podcasts, everything and anything that's good about. uh, Pretty much supports the whole industry. Oh, yeah. And the anglers. Access to get into those hard to reach places. Yeah, I'm not going to ask a whole lot of people that uh, like this show, but that's one thing that I will ask. Uh, and I know a ton of guys that listen to this show are BHA members. Oh, yeah. But if you're, if, you're, if you're hunting public land this year and you're not a BHA member, you really got to think strongly about, right. about doing it. I mean, you pay your taxes, so you got every right to be there. But. It's true, but... <clears throat> Might as well support just the guys that are making oh, sure yeah. it stays there. Just because it's there right now doesn't mean it's going to stay there. Right. And you look out west and see what's ha- that mess. That could happen here. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's a big push for selling it off right now. Bigger than it's ever been. So pay attention. At least pay attention to it. Even if you don't join up, just start paying attention to yeah, it. Yeah, I just feel strongly. I don't want to be pushy and make anybody feel guilty that's not a member. I think if people just no. open their eyes and pay attention to it, it'll lead them to joining anyways. So. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see bigger guys, too, that in the industry. I mean, you do hear a lot of talk about it, but not nearly enough Yeah. from some of the people that are really making their bread and butter off of going out and hunting these places mm-hmm. you know so yeah i think it was your what, episode nine you had jason Mikoff on there and he he touches base on exactly the whole background and a lot of the bha and everything yeah kind of like a little exposure to those that might be unfamiliar with it mm-hmm. so yeah uh that's what i'll ask from listeners of this show to do is uh Go join your local BHA group um, for your state. And even if you were, don't want to do that, at least go to, like you said, go to their social media platform, like their Facebook page. Yeah, at least follow it. Yeah, follow it and just see what's going on. And, uh, yeah, give it some support. It'll lead you to the light. <laughs> it will. And uh, subscribe, listen, share the show, do whatever also helps us tremendously. So. It's been growing really fast, so just help out. Yeah, please do. Go to iTunes, leave a ranking or review. Um, We're getting a lot of them. It's great to see. And we got some funny ones on there, too. I don't know if you guys ever go. I I can't. Dude. God. What the? I went to iTunes this week. Oh, yeah. And was uh, going through the hunting podcast and just reading reviews. There's a good one. The Uper. There's some really funny ones on <laughs> ours, and we're, we're very fortunate. We don't have a, n- a negative comment, but go down a lot of the other hunting podcasts and read, and the, it goes back to how we started this whole thing. Man, are some people brutal. <laughs> like, can't take a joke, can't take a sense of humor. Oh, no, it's and serious. And the, the comments the on some of those are on iTunes is just like, oh, my gosh, you went through the effort to go here to – complain about that or say that just unsubscribe yeah right? but a lot of angry typers out there just blasting through keyboards is what i for sure. they will not go to sleep tonight unless it happens <laughs> <laughs> uh youtube what's the it's deer hunt just deer hunter podcast, deer hunter podcast. youtube go yeah. there and please subscribe that helps us out a lot too so yep on the i try to get every podcast up there it'll just be audio ones if but the in-studio ones, if I remember to actually hit record <laughs> on the camera, I put a YouTube version up where you can actually sit a, see us sitting around the bar here having a couple beers if that's your thing. But Yeah, and as we uh, get out of season and we're doing more like, uh, I don't know, 
I, I don't know exactly how to premise it right now, but I, I think we'll start to put together like some videos on like maybe cooking some easy meals. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know we've been meaning to do one for a while on like setting up the Exodus cameras, some yeah. of the functionability of those. We'll, just, we'll, we'll be starting to put more and more stuff in the YouTube page as right now things are going to be on a decline because yeah. we're going deer yeah. hunting. Yep. So deer hunting first, documenting second. Yeah, but after season, like, you and I are going to go to Wisconsin yep. uh, to meet and spend, a, it sounds like, a weekend with Doug Dern. Yeah, that'll and be it. do a podcast with him nice. on, uh, you know, prop, property management. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd like to do a couple more property management-oriented ones come, like, off-season, like, before the thaw in the spring. So just kind of try to keep the information going with that season you know because you never get to fall out of deer season anymore it's a year-round activity oh, yeah. but to be able to go into like food plots and stuff in the spring and bedding you know, hinge cutting, timber harvests that. and things like that would and uh we're learning as we're going doing this and we all work a lot of hours on top of having families and everything so but we're getting more efficient at that the Definitely. editing process and Definitely. So we're hoping to get more content out as we get going. And better content. More isn't always better. There's plenty of podcasts out right now that are trying to put out more content, and a lot of it's garbage. Right. A lot of it is pure dog shit. Right. You know, so we're never going to be that. We're never going to try to put out just no. a bunch of dog shit to get clicks so that we can sell advertising. Forget that. Want right. some content? I'll take a dump in the box if I got time. <laughs> Label it content. <laughs> Perfect. On that note, thanks for listening. Thank you.